We have details from last night's town council meeting on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Friday, October 16th, 2015. I'm Sarah Mannell. Town Council votes to support a project to dredge Barnstable Harbor. In recent years, the entrance channel to Barnstable Harbor has experienced an extensive influx of sand, resulting in shoaling throughout the channel. The shoaling is on the verge of impeding access to the harbor for commercial and larger recreational vehicles. DBW Director Dan Santos talked about in detail the project during last night's meeting. This is just an overview of the site, and in the circle there is the entrance channel, Marsborough Harbor, as at the very southern portion of that, uh, whoop, well, anyway. This is a close-up of the channel. Really, this points out the issue. The channel is about a 60-foot wide channel, and you can see here, so this is the channel here, and the portion we're talking about is about from this area out. And this is a 60-foot wide channel that is reduced down to maybe 20 feet. It's, it's much narrowed. So this area here and here, this is the shoal sand. And you can also see this lighter material here. This is sand that's built up on the bottom. So this is very reduced depth, um, and hence the need to uh, proceed with this. This is another uh, view just showing how shallow it is in this area. Um, and it's been reported by the harbor master that uh, some vessels have actually been bumping on the bottom uh, in the last year. So this, this shot slide shows the phases. Again, we're talking about starting on November here, this portion, and then the phase two, which is, which will uh, finish this up, will be from here down to past. This is a, the state boat ramp here, and this is, this is Blish Point. And then this is just part of our, uh, how we uh, depict this in the, in the design. Uh, what's noted here, this was last dredged in 2008, and the portion we're talking about here is, is this portion here. And it's over 8,000 uh, cubic yards of sand will be removed from this area. And the council voted unanimously to approve that funding request last night. Town Council also voted to support a $145,000 project that will install GPS monitoring devices on DPW vehicles. DPW Director Dan Santos says the devices will help the Department of Public Works be more efficient. And this is my favorite one. <laughs> the Department of Public Works has a fleet of more than 150 pieces of rolling equipment, which includes trucks, sanders, trailers, loaders, sweepers, snow blowers, skid steers, etc. The majority of this equipment is deployed throughout the town during the workday as well as during emergency operations, including snow and ice events. During snow and ice operations, the DPW is managing more than 250 people and as many pieces of equipment, including our contractors. Our current system of managing and deploying this fleet is with paper maps, radios, cell phones, and the use of foremen and inspectors. While this has generally worked over the years, it is not without problems. In a town that is more than 62 square miles, many of the problem areas are only known through citizen complaints. The availability of proven GPS-based automatic vehicle location or AVL technology will provide a significantly more efficient and effective means to manage the town's assets. The DPW will be capable of GPS tracking of both DPW and contractor vehicles and machines. This tracking information will be displayed on a large smart board in the DPW's Emergency Response Center, known as the ERC. The smart board's programming is such that not only will the current location of all vehicles be displayed, allowing the management team to know where trucks are during the storm, but it would also identify any roads that have been missed and provide a permanent record of response activities. And the council also voted unanimously to approve that project. The UMass Boston Gerontology Institute has been working with Barnstable's Senior Services Division to discover the needs and desires of our older population. 
Last night, Dr. Jan Mutchler made a presentation on the findings to town council. Um, I think it's pretty clear to me um, that you can expect uh, to have expanded demand for services and programs through the um, Senior Services Division. Um, this figure just shows the percentage of survey respondents who currently use those programs by age. And as expected for those people in their 50s, you've got a relatively low participation level, but it increases to th a third of the people 80 and older over who are participating in those programs. Um, this trajectory is something that is very common. It's typical to see uh, a, a real upswing in usage of these kinds of programs as people transition out of their lives where they're focused on, on working. Many of them were working. They're engaged with a lot of other activities. Some of them still have children at home that they're um, taking care of. But as people move into their late 60s and through their 70s, the participation participation increases rather dramatically. So as we talked about with your projections looking ahead, those are the age groups that you're going to have expanding numbers. And so we can expect that um, your participants will increase as the um, share of your population that are in those high use groups increase. Um, we asked people who were not using the, um, these programs why they weren't. Um, Many of them said they were participating in programs elsewhere. They were, some of them said, well, I'm, you know, I'm working, I'm still doing things that um, consume a lot of my time. Um, you know, this is a relatively big community and there's a lot of things to do here. So it's not surprising that not every senior is spending every waking hour at the, um, at the senior center participating in these kinds of communities. But the level of use that you have is really quite high, especially again for that 80 plus population. Um, so again, you can prepare for the senior center participation to increase both because of your shifting demographic, because of the upswing in um, use for older um, uh, age groups, and because the people who are, um, when they're asked to look ahead and say, are you planning to use it in the future, a lot of them say, yes, I am. And so th uh, many of them are looking ahead at a time where they're not working so much, or their children have left, or they're not um, heavily engaged in the volunteer activities or whatever else they do. And they're looking ahead and saying, I know those services are out there, and I'm looking forward to using them. And um, I regard myself as either very likely or somewhat likely to participate. Um, okay, having said all of that, I think that we can also suggest that expanding knowledge of what the senior center is, what the senior services division does, what kinds of opportunities there are there, I think expanding that knowledge is, is, would be a positive thing. Um, many residents do re feel that they lack close familiarity with what happens there, especially the younger residents, but even some of the older residents felt like their, their knowledge of what happens there is fairly limited. Um, one of the most common, um, commonly mentioned factors that people felt would increase their likelihood of participating was if they knew more about it. So when we ask people, you know, what would increase your likelihood of um, participating in these programs or uh, activities, they said, well, if I knew more about it or I knew how to access it, th those kinds of responses were, um, were common. Um, we ask people where they get their information about the, um, these activities, and we saw a big distinction between boomers and seniors in terms of where they get that information. Um, the Barnstable Patriot was mentioned by about a fifth to a fourth of both age groups. Uh, the Compass Magazine was mentioned by almost half of the, um, of the seniors, but only 16% of the boomers. Um, and we also saw a real split in terms of um, attachment to electronic um, information versus print information. And again, this is what we see every community that we look at. You know, the, everyone's looking towards a time where we can go all electronic and put everything online and that will be sufficient. Um, but for now, um, that's not sufficient for today's seniors, especially the 80 plus population really are looking for that print media for their information. And you can read the report in its entirety by visiting the town's website. Well, be sure to tune in to our hour-long news program, Barnstable, this morning weekdays at 7 a.m. On Monday's show, we will chat with Interim Superintendent of Schools, Bill Butler. We'll learn more about a new life-saving class for pet owners. Plus, we'll have all the news and information you need. For Barnstable Today, 
I'm Sarah Mannell.